Hello, welcome to the channel. Today's topic, how to practice. Let's get into it. Practicing is essential, but not all of us have the endless hours every day in order to get better at what we want to get better at. Many people work nine to five, and we only have half an hour to an hour to fit in a small practice every day. You can still get quite good on your instrument every day with that small amount of practice, but it's gonna take a little bit of organization because we all still wanna do other stuff. We wanna go to shows. We need to exercise. We wanna relax. But don't get too bummed out about it because there's time. Let the sun set on your current practice routines and let me introduce you to some great practice tips to help you get the most out of your practice. Motivation is very important. I started with this because without motivation, we wouldn't even want to practice what we want to practice, what we want to become better at. Um, motivation is what drives us to accomplish our goals and tasks. And one thing that the talent researcher Daniel Coyle says um, in the little book of talents is that we need to stare at who we want to become in order to motivate ourselves. So that is as simple as finding someone in your field who is better than you, maybe the leader of the field, and idolizing them in a way that improves your game, improves your talents. Um, let's say you're a tennis player, you might idolize Serena or Venus Williams. If you're a guitarist, you might idolize Jimi Hendrix or Eddie Van Halen, and so on and so on. Whatever you're in, whatever field you're in, you can motivate yourself by finding someone um, in that field. And it's as easy as getting a poster, putting it on the wall, getting a book by them, or even just putting a picture on the background of your phone. These little reminders get our brain thinking about what we want to be doing throughout the day. What's this? I said take only what you need to practice. It's my industrial strength hair dryer. And I can't live without it. Not much needs to be said about distractions and practice. The more distractions we have, the worse we will practice. In today's world, there's lots of distractions. We've got our computers, phones, TVs, some people still listen to the radio, social media going off constantly, um, and even clutter around your workspace can be a distraction. And that's something that Jessie Payne alludes to in her book, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. Um, where she says, when you're met with constant distractions, your brain goes into a state of multitasking. How can you truly focus and become better at what you're practicing without a direct focus? And your brain operates best when it's allowed to focus on one thing at a time. So clean up your workspace. Try to have as few things around you as possible and leave your phone in the other room. Keeping track of your progress with a journal day to day is a great way to help improve your practice and make it more effective. And here's an example of how to journal. So your practice journal should have three sections, goals, practice, and reflect and assess section. In your goals section, it's important to keep that as precise as possible. So the example goals here, play C minor scale legato, 80 beats per minute, 10 times in a row with no mistakes. That's very precise. You're working towards a very distinct goal. The other two goals, memorize the first two bars, and it can be even as small as the third goal, transition from chord three to four. Now in your practice section, this is where you're gonna keep track of everything you're doing. If you're doing something numerous times, keep track of how many times you do it. Once you've tallied everything up, it's also important to make sure you track your time. You're gonna to wanna to know how much time you've spent where. In the reflect section, you wanna ask yourself a few questions. Did you meet your goals? Why, why not? 
I feel it's important to ask this, how do you feel in the body? How do you feel in the mind? And then what can you do next time? It all gives you a glimpse day to day on how you're doing. I wanted to make one of these segments about warm-ups. Warm-ups are vitally important to the health and longevity of our playing, muscles, tendons, ligaments, joints, etc. Any pro athlete out there is not gonna go full steam potato without first warming up. And as musicians, you should consider yourself athletes, at least in the hands, where we're constantly making athletic movements with our hands and anything we use to play the instrument. We, we play for hours a day, so without warming up, you could expose yourself to strains, repetitive injuries, um, overuse, and so on. Preventing injury is way better than trying to heal an injury. Take it from me, getting injured sucks. It's, oh, it, take the time, every time, to warm up, it'll hurt less later. My final tip for this video is practice slowly. 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 It was Camille Saint-Saëns who said, first we must practice slowly, then more slowly, and finally slowly. You can't play something fast until you've played it slowly. Once it's under control slowly, you can gradually increase the tempo. Daniel Coyle says in his book, The Talent Code, super slow practice acts like a magnifying glass. It lets us see errors more clearly and thus fix them. Thank you for watching the video. These are my first five tips on improving your practicing. If you'd like to see more, let me know in the comments below. Please give this video a like and share it with any friends you think might need help getting out of that practice rut. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content. Thank you very much. Happy practicing.